Hi everyone, I'm Claire Morno. I'm the Communications Manager at CISA, Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture. And I am here today talking to John Grossman, who is the Chief Falafelier of the Holyoke well said. Company. <laughs> I practiced, I got it. Um, and we are gonna be talking today about what's going on with the Holyoke Hummus Company. Um, so John, do you wanna start by just telling us a little bit about the business and your background and what it is that you do? Sure. Well, we uh, we started uh, as a tent and tables, and then uh, got a, our food truck, uh, the Great Garbanzo, uh, in our first year, and uh, started out as a as a food truck, serving mostly at events uh, up and down the valley here, um, and catering. And uh, uh, eventually, we opened a restaurant on High Street in Holyoke. Uh, we opened a, a second uh, food unit, the, the, the Little Chickpea, and um, uh, we, were, we, we were, had all the plates in the air. Um, uh, we were uh, doing the restaurant and the food trucks. Uh, 2020 was, uh, was going to be uh, super busy for us. Um, and then, uh, then, of course, March happened and, uh, and the world changed. Um, and uh, we felt tons of support at the very beginning. It was winter time, uh, springtime before the trucks had, had really started back up. And the curbside uh, type of service evolved pretty fast for us. And, and I think every other restaurant that, that, uh, that could figure it out. And that service really sustained us uh, through the beginning of, of the pandemic. And they weren't even permitting food trucks for many, many months. So we weren't quite sure what the future of, of that side of the business was. And then eventually uh, it, it did open up for food trucks and uh, we realized that, that uh, the style of service from the truck was the, the no contact, low contact service that was really uh, gonna be making everybody feel comfortable. Uh, my staff and customers uh, and the, the boards of health uh, and uh, as offices did not fill back up again, High Street for us, which was a, a, a location really dependent on uh, the big offices around us coming in for lunch every day, uh, it just it wasn't making sense anymore. So we, we were able to, I mean, we call it a pivot back to the food truck, uh, but it's really, it's really our origins and, and has always been uh, the larger part of, of our business. So we make uh, our food still at the restaurant um, or in that, that kitchen. Uh, we closed the restaurant uh, a few months back and we're just serving on the food truck now. Uh, we serve uh, our falafel and clemas and uh, uh, fried, fried things, uh, fried Brussels sprouts, fried cauliflower. Um, and uh, we've actually started to share the space uh, back on High Street with another food truck really made sense for us to to uh, to bunk together and, and save those expenses and, uh, and she's actually going to open up a, it's called Crave uh, they're going to open up a, a takeout space uh, in the front of uh, the restaurant there okay. uh, and that's uh, that's that's sort of how we how we changed up our service the pandemic also um, uh, gave us a little bit of bandwidth to keep pursuing uh, uh, getting our wholesale license. Mm -hmm. so, so we're in addition to hosting another, another food truck at the restaurant, uh, we're getting our wholesale license so that we can make hummus and put it into the markets. Yeah, and so in terms of, I think one of the things that we've heard from a lot of the restaurants that we work with in terms of adapting to the needs of the pandemic, one of the challenges is that some cuisines and some foods are better equipped than others for takeout. It seems like you, you started out as a food truck and it seems like you're pretty well, like the food that you serve is pretty mobile. Um, can you yeah. talk a little bit about like what it is that you make and what the sort of philosophy is behind your, your offerings? Sure, uh, we definitely started uh, as mobile, uh, handheld food. We wanted it to be things that we could uh, make quickly, but also make fresh. So uh, we, we have things like our, our salads chopped and ready to go. Uh, but when you order a falafel sandwich, we fry the falafel fresh. Uh, so we have to have, have the truck in the fryer and everything with us to be able to do that. 
when we opened the restaurant, we expanded a little bit, um, added salads and a few other variations of things. And um, uh, that uh, uh, it wasn't possible to bring all of that back onto the truck. Uh, but we have have brought a few things on the truck that didn't used to be there. Like we we had latkes uh, back at the restaurant, so a, a potato pancake, um, and uh, we serve that on the truck now. And, and brought back a, a couple of other things that that uh, that we could do that would still be quick and uh, easy to take out. And uh, it it also can can. I mean, it's it, it's funny to talk about it now. It, 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 we liked that the uh, our falafel plate. Was something that that could translate well into a, a, a buffet mm. uh, for people. So yeah. when we would do catering, uh, it would be it would be very easy for people to sort of decide on the menu. They'd look at our food, they'd see our our falafel plate, and say, "Great, I, I want that as a buffet." Well, people aren't aren't getting together for buffets uh, right now uh, at all. Um, so so we actually uh, wound up doing, especially with uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, like feed the front lines programs where people were sending. You know, 30 meals, 50 meals uh, to to Bay State Hospital or Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Sure. And uh, instead of putting together, uh, you know, big trays of food, we were sending out 50 boxed meals. So so falafel plates and falafel sandwiches, um, our, our Brussels sprouts, they, they all uh, and we, we switched to to uh, sort of traditional to go container. That's a, a closed to go container. Uh, it used to be that when you got food off the truck, it would be in that that uh, red and white checked uh, um, the basket was ubiquitous. Yeah. The basket yeah. thing. Um, and uh, uh, someday, someday we'll be able to be that casual again, but for now, uh, you know, people want that, that close to go container, uh, the, the fork and the napkin and the, uh, uh, you know, coming uh, uh, all wrapped up in a package for people. Uh, although lots of people, uh, it was sort of an interesting kind of middle period of the pandemic uh, where there was there was a you know a checkbox on the online ordering no utensils please because you know people people are like sanitizing the outside of the to go boxes sure even they they didn't want to touch utensils but uh, uh, I think I think uh, the science has evolved a little bit beyond that yeah and um, my coworker told me that you have pickled turnips on the menu right now can you talk a little bit about your relationships with local farms even either now I know it's the tail end of yeah. winter but <laughs> yeah. Well, well, t tail end of winter is is when uh, is is uh, is the end of the, uh, the the turnip inventory from winter moon roots. Um, did I say that farm right? Um, and uh, uh, so so we get we get uh, purple top turnips from them, uh, uh, carrots from them uh, uh, as well. Actually, uh, deep into winter, um, then and we uh, we pickle that ourselves. We we. Uh, uh it's it's pickles and beets i mean it's, they're not pickles in there uh well i guess they are after we pickled turn beets. them into pickles <laughs> yeah. pickled beets yeah um uh they're uh they're delicious uh it's it's pickled turnips that the beets we put in for color really they don't they don't uh, affect the flavor um but the, the turnips are are delicious and uh, uh and then seasonally uh you know when we can get local cucumbers and 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 tomatoes and parsley uh, and, and those things, uh, uh, we do kitchen garden farm, and red fire farm. Uh, we, we, lo we love those relationships, uh, you know, but I do, I do serve kind of something that's got to uh, look the same um, uh, 12 months out of the year. Sure. And, uh, uh, and then there's some, there's some things that just aren't from around here. Um, you know, we can't grow chickpeas in this climate. Yeah. I, guess, I guess not, not until uh, climate change really kicks in. Right. It's all it's all a balancing act, I think, for a lot of restaurants in terms of local sourcing, because people, mm -hmm. you know, do expect kind of consistency throughout the year and you plug it in when you can. And that that's seems pretty common. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious, just now we're talking about like what's coming in the summer and tomatoes and cucumbers and that sort of thing. But maybe in a more immediate sense, I'm curious just about, you know, how you see things developing for your business. Um, you made it through the sort of crisis period. Um, mm. or the, you know, the swiftly changing time and how are things looking when you think about like your offerings and, and what, what your business is going to look like as we move into spring and into the a time with the vaccine and all of those changes that are coming. We think that, um, so, so, uh, the major part of our business used to be the big events, 
uh, uh, Green River Festival, uh, concerts at Look Park, um, uh, food truck Fridays at uh, Abandoned Building Brewery, um, and, and, and others. And uh, we think that, that those will start to happen on kind of a normal scale, um, you know, end of summer, uh, 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 heading into fall. So, you know, Green River Festival has, has announced they're, they're on for the end of August. Right. Um, uh, who knows what it's going to look like? Um, uh, I'm sure that they're, that they're they're trying to figure out. You know, but I think there are like 10,000 people there. So so obviously there's got to be uh, uh, lots of people have to have been vaccinated by then. Uh, and I'm I'm assuming it'll still be a, a mandatory uh, mask for them. Uh, but you know we're, we're a food truck, so we're going to be handing people who are walking around um, food to eat. So so. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, we'll we'll leave it up to the the health departments to say to say uh, you know what's a safe way to do that at, at that time, but we don't think that's going to happen until uh, uh, you know late late summer or or early fall. Uh, and in the meantime, what you know what we've uh, done is is something that food trucks, at least in the Upper Valley, uh, just don't have opportunity to do, which is to just be in one spot. Uh, a regular spot where they know there's going to be foot traffic, uh, and and uh, you know know that you can you can come out and, and make your nut every day. And uh, you know being in downtown Northampton has has really been that spot for us. We experimented a little bit in the beginning. We were we were out in Leeds. Um, Seth Myers catering uh, uh, graciously let us be at his parking lot. Yeah. And um, uh, and and now uh, uh, resonate um, has uh, invited us to to be in their parking lot here, which has just been just been uh, been terrific to be able to to be downtown with the downtown crowd, um, serving in a in a style that that people are super comfortable with because you know the the servers inside. Um, um, uh, we were only still only handling credit cards, not even handling cash. Uh, so our credit card machine is on is on the outside, and um, it's it's a very uh, low to no contact style of service. And we'll keep doing this. Uh, we we'd really like to to just just maintain the steady presence here, uh, which is is uh, uh, really only only doable because uh, with with the little chickpea, our our other uh, our food trailer, we'll be able to get out to catering events. We'll be able to get out to. Um, other events as they're as they're they're happening. So if somebody, you know, people are talking to me uh, about, you know, having a thirty person wedding, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 probably a delayed wedding at that. So so we're getting uh, we're getting a big pile up of, of people who are having having uh, uh, deferred uh, events. Uh, still, they're talking about about late summer uh, and, and early fall, but um, uh, you know they're they're. they're uh, you know, between 30 and 100 people, which, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll see what the science says about, about gathering together 100 people in September. Yeah. Um, so in the meantime, do you want to show us what your setup is for the service that you're doing? You said that it was a little bit like sure. working inside a submarine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's super tiny inside. And ironically, even though the, the, uh, uh, the little chickpea uh, looks a lot smaller, it's much bigger on the inside. Uh, this this truck is is uh, really kind of the smallest style of uh, uh, of this kind of truck uh, that there is, and uh, uh, we've got it uh, pretty jam packed with the equipment and sometimes people. I mean, right now, it's um, uh, we're we're doing all of our service just with with one person, um, and uh, and we. Uh, uh, we can handle the flow and everybody gets their food and, and uh, you know, in, in a good amount of time. And the online ordering has really, has really helped us with that. Um, you know, being able to sort of control the flow and serve, uh, you know, serve our customers uh, uh, quickly. And when they, when they want to get it, they don't have to stand around or wait for, for a lot of people uh, or stand in line with, with a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So the online ordering has been, has been really, uh, really great for that. Uh, when it's busy, um, you know, if we're if we were at uh, at a busy festival, if you could believe it, there are actually uh, three people on the truck. There's there's one person standing here at the uh, at the fry station. Uh, there's there's one person standing at the window, 
and then there's there's one person uh, who's here assembling food. Oh, wow. um, and the uh, the first, it's tight quarters. It's tight quarters. You can see, if you can see, this is this is the the height of, uh, of how much of an opening there is between us and uh, and the customers right now. Yeah, so it's it's uh, well separated for COVID concerns. Yeah, and I, and I you know I, I wouldn't ask my my staff to, to to be in a situation that was that was unsafe or or had unnecessary exposure um, and. Uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't ask customers uh, to do that either. So, so we're we're very very glad that uh, you know somebody else cooked up the plexi and the and the and the and the small opening and and uh, and said, okay, this is this is what's going to be acceptable. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, everybody uh, everybody can order and eat and feel safe. And uh, you know, it was it was it was very surprising to me um, when restaurants at the beginning people said okay restaurants are essential mm -hmm. and you know i could understand uh you know grocery stores um and and farms and 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 all of the the fantastic uh novel uh uh distribution of of, of local farm food that, that that came up the sunderland cooperative and things like that were just sure. just so amazing and really cool and um uh, I just uh, it, it was it was sort of amazing to me how um, important people felt restaurants were, uh, you know, to the to the the food system. Mm -hmm. um, so so we feel a lot of responsibility to be able to uh, to keep serving uh, and do it responsibly um, and and just uh, just continue to be part of the community as uh, as as best you can. while we're all, uh, you know, uh, so separated now. Um, and, and, and one of the things that I've, I've always loved about being in this business is, is, is that it was about food and about bringing people together. Um, so we, we uh, uh, have to have to reimagine that in these times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been, um, you know, interesting for us because, you know, the core of our work is that we work with farmers and definitely we've been hearing from the farms that we work with. Um, you know, concern about their restaurant partners that they've had relationships with for years or decades and wanting to make sure that you all um, can make it through this tough period and, and come out the other side and, um, you know, the loss of just like gathering places and by necessity and, you know, it's correct and good that people are, are staying right. safe, but really wanting to make sure that the restaurant world, the, you know, the local independent restaurant world is is going to make it out the other side um well it's going to be it's going to be different yeah yeah you know? so for now give the spiel about you know when and where people can find you and and where to look for you sure so uh the the great garbanzo is at 110 pleasant street in northampton that's the parking lot at, at the resonate dispensary here and we're here wednesday through saturdays from 12 to 7 uh and uh, uh we just we just love being able to get out here <laughs> that much and and uh and serve and that and we're also available for for catering really of uh, of any size so if you've got um you know an event uh, going on outside of those hours uh you can still contact us you see our phone number there yeah um, <laughs> and uh, uh and uh you know we can we can put something uh something together for your event um and uh yeah that's 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 where we are right now that's great all right holy Okumas company downtown northampton lunch most days of the week yeah and dinner and dinner right lunch and 12, dinner. 12 to 7 people have oh. dinner people have right dinner of course dinner. i'm just you know yeah. european i eat later yeah. than that <laughs> 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 all right yeah, yeah. Um, oh i'm sorry did you think 12 to 7 during the day it's 12 to 7 <laughs> yeah <laughs> only for very early breakfast <laughs> right, right. all right well thanks so much for your time um and i hope that uh you know the days get warmer and and more welcoming to people as we move into spring Thank you. Be safe and uh, and thanks for uh, for talking with us today. Thanks, John.